Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and uh, I'm holding my Fly 5 joystick because uh, I've been putting it to good use the last few days because earlier in the week I signed up for the premium beta just before it closed for Elite Dangerous better late than never anyway I've just been doing the uh, practice missions because as you can imagine a lot of the control keys are fairly complex so um, I've been using my Fly 5 joystick but uh, to be honest there's not enough keys on this joystick uh, for the game and you will have to bind them as well to your keyboard but ultimately a HOTOS setup is certainly the way to go so in the long run this joystick will be a little bit inadequate but for now it will have to do anyway let's have a look at some gameplay from the training missions in Elite Dangerous now I've been gradually working my way through the excellent combat single player scenarios and these are a great way to learn the keys and the multiple controls in Elite Dangerous now we're sitting in the cockpit of the first ship you will fly in the game and what you will fly in these combat scenarios now looking around you can see there's a multitude of instruments which you will use throughout the game the traditional radar sensor screen there and uh, more instruments on either side now looking up there's great visibility in the sidewinder and you can get a good all-round view of space now at the moment as far as I understand there's no third person view in Elite Dangerous whether there will be a drone cam added and bearing in mind that this is all beta gameplay you're watching I don't know but um, sometimes 3D external views can be a controversial point to uh, flight simulation fans as some feel it takes the immersion out the way but we'll have to see to, and wait to see if there will be external views now in this mission my task is to destroy this large ship called the anaconda now all the ship names come straight from the old elite games and their sequels now of course bearing in mind that elite debuted early in the early 80s and uh, I remember playing, uh, I think it was one of the sequels on my Atari ST sometime in the early 1990s. Back in the day, that was a long time ago. Now, of course, uh, games have come a long way since then. And uh, from what I've seen early on, Elite Dangerous is really looking good. Now we get a close-up look at the Anaconda here. And that ship is big. Now, a lot of people will want to know what's the difference between Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous. Well, Elite Dangerous is a lot further along. It's due to come out towards the end of the year. And it is helped by the fact that they use their uh, own game engine, which Frontier Developments have been working with on a number of games over the past few years. While Star Citizen is using the... Uh, real cutting edge crisis engine which really wasn't designed to be uh, used for space games and basically they've had to um, well redesign it to suit their own purposes and Star Citizen is really going to be um, a very high fidelity looking game on the crisis engine and uh, subsequently you're going to have to wait quite a few years for the persistent universe to come to fruition but you will get uh, modules come out now and again like Arena Commander but that's very early alpha but Elite Dangerous is looking very good and uh, to be honest I'm a big fan of all space games science fiction so if you like space games if you like Star Trek Star Wars Babylon 5 Battlestar Galactica which I think most people do you're going to like Elite Dangerous and you also go like Star Citizen so ultimately I will play them all or both of them or any other space game maybe not X Rebirth which proved a bit of a disappointment to me anyway let's close in and um, 
take down the Anaconda. Now, the actual Fly 5 joystick I'm using is actually not too bad. Ultimately, a HOTA setup is the way to go, but the excellent Elite Dangerous um, control configurations picks up the Fly 5 perfectly, and uh, a lot of the keys are mapped to the joystick, but you will actually have to use the keyboard as well. Here we are opening up with my beam laser on the Anaconda, which is taking evasive maneuvers. Now, the excellent targeting system does allow you to target um, various subsystems on the Anaconda. And of course, later on, you will use that extensively in the game. Now I found that uh, I played through this scenario uh, various times and the thing to do is not to allow the Anaconda to um, get too far away because he will eventually um, jump away or warp away and uh, you'll just be sitting there in space failing the uh, mission. Now we're opening up with the missile rack here and I believe these missiles are unguided so you probably have to get up close to use them. Oops. And that's a, um, a big danger in Elite Dangerous, especially if, like me, uh, you don't know where your reverse engine button is. I was lucky to, so, to survive that ramming. Now it does take a little while to get used to the traditional uh, radar screen here, but it works quite logically. and. Uh, after a few practice missions, you'll get the hang of it. It's probably um, not exactly wise to get too close because um, I could be taking damage here. But fortunately, I have some. Uh, friends with me who are also um, taking it to the Anaconda. Now I broke off here to recharge my shield to reset the system and um, you, one great thing about uh, this Elite Dangerous is that you can um, prioritise where your powers go go um, just to your systems, your engine or your weapons so you, that's vital that you learn how to do that. Now we've got the Anaconda down to 11% hull, 10% and I think he's going to go fairly soon. And the Anaconda is no more. Let's have a look at that in slow motion. A spectacular explosion there. Thank you very much for watching once again and uh, until next time please don't forget to like and subscribe if you wish and I'll see you sometime soon in that ever expanding universe of gaming beyond the frontier and out in the bus. Warning, temperature critical.
target destroyed. <laughs> 